Well, good morning, everybody. It's, uh, I believe, the 18th of October, 2023. And I did a video yesterday, but uh, uh, I kind of sucked in the video, so I decided I wouldn't upload it. And it's maybe a, I don't like to say a good thing because there was a sad incident, of course, last night um, about the uh, bombing of that hospital. And, uh, of course, I'm in Minsk. I'll tell you first where I'm at. This is the Nove Theater here, and it's not far from the Magalovskaya metro stop. But anyway, this, uh, this attack on the Christian hospital in a Christian hospital in the Gaza Strip. And uh, last count, they say like casualties, at least, at least casualties, I'm saying, it's uh, like over 900, and some estimates have the dead at 800. So normally that would be a lot more, and of course this was a very large bomb, and lots of different stories on to, according to what this explosion was all about, and who did it, and what it was, and um, well, I don't know, as far as the numbers are concerned, uh, the initial report was at least 500 dead, and of course, uh, there was a um, a medic that was there on the scene, and uh, very much many hours after that, after this explosion, he was stating that it's nearly impossible to actually figure out on how many died in this explosion because so many bodies were blown into many pieces. They're just pieces of bodies all over, and it's very difficult to figure out how many actually died. And uh, the estimates of 800, 800 dead are probably somewhat uh, more close to accurate. And uh, some are saying that at least 2,000 people are, are wounded. And this attack, it was not that all these people were inside of the hospital, because you have to imagine if it's, there's so many people dead and injured, it would have to be a very large hospital to accommodate so many people. But you also have to think of what the situation is right now with uh, a lot of people being injured from all these bombings. The, ho the hospitals obviously would be packed to capacity and there people be on the, in the hallways and, also, and then they have visitors and there's so many people needed to take care of all of these people and the hospital staff is not that big. So it isn't really um, exaggerating when you say that that there were in all maybe right around 3,000 people affected by this. And uh, the bomb was so large that uh, it wasn't just isolated as far as anybody inside of the hospital, but it was even those outside of the hospital. And uh, some people are saying it's not a bomb. They were saying that it was, uh, uh, you know, a lot of these have already been discounted, of course, and uh, the real story will come out, but uh, the original um, the original story by Israel was that was that Hamas had fired off a bomb or rocket, and that it uh, misfired and it came back and it destroyed the hospital. <coughs> and then they came out with another account that said it was a bomb inside and it blew up and ignited uh, the store of ammunition inside of the hospital. And of course, they're saying that Hamas keeps, you know, they have their, their headquarters inside of hospitals and schools, and they keep their ammunition there, you know, using it as like a human shield uh, so that Israel won't bomb it. And uh, you can't deny that at some places um, that Hamas also uses human shields. Of course, Israel is very well known for that. Of course, that's probably where the expression came from, human shield, is because Israel was doing that long ago, at least in the 1980s, I, when I remember seeing that, they had film footage of, of the Israelis using Palestinians as human shields when they go into some apartment or anything so that if anybody opens up fire, the first person that gets killed and the one that absorbs the bullets will be the Palestinian. Like a lot of times a young girl or a mother or anybody. So. It's one of the biggest tragedies committed against innocent civilians that the world has witnessed in a long time. I'll just read from what I was writing here. Um, 
The people of Gaza already living without hope for decades are now subject to war crimes on an unprecedented scale for a single attack incident. This was a, I don't know, a lot of people are saying that this was, um, nothing like this has ever happened on, on a hospital. 500 people at one time. The death toll on children in the Gaza Strip is so tragic it is incomprehensible to put it into words. And the smoke spokesman for Netanyahu admitted to the strike originally and then he deleted it. They de and then they had um, other um, posts, I don't know if it was on what was known as Twitter but it's called X now or wherever they put it on on some social media. They they said that it was a surprise and then they deleted that one as well. And I was saying in my last video that there would probably be an October surprise, you know, and everything was building up to that. We all noticed that, you know, the tensions were just getting too high and it's a lot of this, a lot of people are talking about, it's very similar to right at the beginning of World War I when tensions were so high and everybody knew that there, that a war would be inevitable. And that's of course going on right now. There's just way too much going on, especially in the world. And then you see, actually, you know, it's not very difficult to figure out who's pressing these tensions. Who, which country, and this was even said by Dmitry Medvedev, which country is supplying a lot of these other countries with massive amounts of weapons and ammunition? Which country is doing that? Which country sent a lot of ammunition and uh, bombs to Ukraine? And which one has armed Israel to the teeth? Especially when you have this, uh, some sort of an ideology like Zionism or, or Nazism that believes you're superior and you have a right and others don't have a right. Even those people that maybe have lived there for thousands of years, they don't have a right to that land. You do have the right. Maybe because God says you have a right. God is a real estate agent and God has said that's your land. Or the great, the great Adolf, the great Adolf in the sky says that, uh, some people are the master race and therefore it's right for them to put down other races, the inferior people, the untermenschen like the Russians, or actually the Israelis say that the, uh, that the well actually even the, U the Ukrainians are saying that the Russians, when they refer to the Russians and the Israelis refer to the Palestinians as even being below untermenschen, they're animals. So there's the, the Ubermenschen, the untermenschen, and then animals like uh, sheep and goats, and pigs and dogs, so that's how they look at those people. So then it makes it very easy, and that's what the United States did, of course, in, uh, in Vietnam, calling uh, people the gooks. You know, they come up with these names to dehumanize people so that it makes the soldiers, makes it much easier for you to go and kill them so that they're not quite human or they have some sort of a stigmatism or something so that they're not, they're not worthy of actually living, and you're doing the whole world a favor when you're massacring these people. Don't be, so you all know that sort of thing. The spokesman for Netanyahu, like I said, he admitted it and he deleted it. And there's been uh, a few other things like this too. So yeah, the first one was a malf malfunctioned rocket. Uh, they're coming up with so many stories and they, they're, they're coming up with new stories one right after the other to, to try to fit the, fit the narrative to get away with all of this stuff right now. And Israel even warned that they're going to be killing, uh, killing lots of people. They said that they will even kill Israeli hostages in the act of killing Hamas. So, and that they had to do this. You know, that was, uh, that was really a taboo in the old days, you know, to, for uh, Jews to kill other Jews. But, you know, things are a lot different now. Look at what's going on in Ukraine sending your own people to be slaughtered in meat grinders. What is going on in the world, you know, where I mentioned in one video that people are, there's a lack of respect. You know, there's a lack of respect for other people and there's even a lack of respect for your own people. So we don't even respect our own lives anymore. This, this is really getting, uh, this is really bad. This is really bad. And then you had a, uh, a Muslim going around yelling, Allah Akbar and killing people in Belgium just yesterday too. But anyway, in spite of all of these, uh, all of these claims, 
of who did it and what it was. It looks like the Palestinians have recovered pieces of this missile and they know what it is. And I wrote that a little bit later in my notes and I'll, I'll get to that. So they know, they know what, uh, what kind of missile this was and that tells you who did it. So. But uh, one of the uh, things that Israel said, you know, they're admitting that they did it. You know, on one side, some certain spokespeople are, and they said, well, we warned Israel. I mean, we, or we warned the Palestinians to evacuate five hospitals, and that was one of them, and they didn't do it, so that's why we bombed it. So in other words, they're saying that they bombed it, but they were bombing it because they said Hamas was supposed to be there. But why can't they just leave that hospital alone? Can you fit all, the, all of Hamas in this hospital? I don't know. They don't want to, wait a minute. Somebody's talking to me, hang on a moment here. Well, I'm back again. I was filming over by a theater, and uh, this theater right across the street over here, and they were telling me, <laughs> they were telling me I can't film there. And I said, well, what is it? Is it, a is it for terrorist attack? So you still have some stupid people even in Belarus that, that are still living in the old Soviet Union days. And uh, it's incredible. It's incredible. So I was in Germany. I was filming in a supermarket just to show some prices. I mean, it was like, uh, I think I was taking pictures. I wasn't filming. I wasn't filming a video and uh, taking some pictures. And they came and uh, told me I'm not allowed. Not, to, not allowed to take pictures. And if I, <laughs> I have to put my camera away or, or they will, uh, I don't know, call the police or something and get me out. And I can, I can take pictures in supermarkets in Belarus, but of course it's not allowed in Germany. You know, and I was trying to uh, show what kind of this, this revolution is going on right now in the, in the world and uh, how it used to be like that in the Soviet Union. And it's now like that in the West in a lot of places. And as you know, when you walk into shops and things like that, all over in the United States, they have, uh, they have security guards in the front. You know, you don't need that over here in Belarus, but uh, you know, there are very few you see anywhere and you hardly ever see any police, but these people, I don't know, I guess they, I don't know. I, I'm, you know, it's, it's like you can walk around over there with your cell phone and film all over that very quickly. It's not like somebody's out there. And then if, if I don't know, is this like a terrorist attack? You already filmed it and then you walk away. And it's so easy, so I don't understand what they're getting at. I guess these are people like they're uh, still back in the Soviet Union. But anyway, that's, that's not what I was here talking about today. Uh, where was I? Um, hmm. let, me, let, me, let me try to get back where I was at. I'm so kind of flustered because of that. Um, it was, I think, the United Nations they were talking about. Um, how can people in Gaza evacuate a hospital in 24 hours, especially a large hospital like that, and then in a, in a war zone when things like that are happening, other places have been bombed and there's people coming continuously, continuously from all the bombing and all the destruction that's going on there. So that's impossible. And uh, like Israel saying, oh, we warned you, you should have evacuated, you should have evacuated your hospital. Jeez, talk about... Uh, war crimes. But anyway, I got a lot to say about this. I'll just keep on going. And uh, so it's, that's, a, that's kind of allowed to do that. They, nobody's even mentioning the word war crime or anything from that. And when Putin was rescuing children from the war zone in Ukraine, then Putin was looked at as a war criminal. And as you see what's going on in Ukraine, how much child trafficking is going on in the organ trade, child organs, children's organs, you know. But there's no mention of that. There's no mention of that. There's, there's just mention on whoever the designated bad guys are. And also think about Gaza. There is no electricity, no water, no food, no fuel. None of that stuff is getting let in. And the hospitals had some some of that stuff saved up and they were running low on that. So, and you want to talk about war crimes, huh? So it's only a war crime if it's the Russians. 
Iranians are, like I said, the designated bad guys. <sighs> when the collective West does anything like that, oh, it's, it's not mentioned. Yeah, wait till you hear a little bit more about all this stuff when I'm getting on a little bit deeper into this. We're living in an Orwellian world, so evil is now good. Actually, I was reading from what I wrote, and I was interrupted, but let me, let me find a place right now. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm grateful for being in Belarus. You know, that's the first time that I've ever run into anybody like that, doing that sort of a thing to me, telling me I can't film there. You know? and that's, that's not any, like, not a war crime or anything. It's just uh, some kind of a strange stuff like that. Uh, and I'd like to stay here, and I hope this life, I hope it's sustained this way. I don't want to... Uh, you know, they have a lot of things going on here behind the scenes, and they have uh, psyops going on and trying to get the youth to uh, protest and go overthrow the government. You, you guys might know that. Hmm. But for a place to be like this, you have to have good leaders. And look at the leaders in the West, and that's why you see all those problems going on. Look at, look at Canada. Look at Trudeau. Look at Olaf Scholz, Biden. Need I say more? Hmm. Yeah, and you have to hope that... The the fundamental changes can be made in the West so that the system can produce leaders possessing morality rather than those filled with greed and arrogance and self-serving exceptionalism. And hopefully they can be kicked out. Maybe these people should be put into prison where they belong. <laughs> Fat chance of that happening, right? But this uh, attack on the Christian hospital, it's already proven. I mean, even late at night, we're talking about like two in the morning there, but protests and storming of uh, American embassies and unfortunately and I don't think it's the right you know the right measure but of course they're talking about uh, in Palestine they want to uh, get uh, Abbas Mahmoud or Mahmoud, Mahmoud uh, Abbas to get resigned which is not the right move I don't think Christian hospital after the attack the Minister of National Security, Ben Gvir, not Gvir, Gvir, said that no humanitarian aid will be allowed into Gaza. Only hundreds of tons of explosives. So they're going to bomb the place. Not one ounce of humanitarian aid, he said, until the hostages are released. And uh, as I already told you what they said, they will, they're even willing to kill the hostages to get Hamas. So what do you think will happen when they release the hostages? Then some real bombing will start. They'll bomb them even more intensively than if they did have hostages. I don't know. Then I saw some report that Hamas is making some sort of a deal to, uh, I don't know, kind of surrender but of course that's not going to be true that's not true at all they're not stupid and they're not deaf because Israel has already said that they're going to they're going to kill everybody <sighs> I don't know maybe this uh, this uh, attack on the hospital is going to uh, slow Israel down hopefully maybe have them alter their thinking a little bit hopefully a lot yeah, and of course, uh, Israelis, they want to kill Palestinians as many as possible to keep the population down. Yeah, but you know, if you, um, like the situation in, in France, in Paris, and it's just the same in um, Israel and Palestine, a lot of the people, I'm not saying, I'm not making excuses for Israel when I say this, but a lot of the people, they say that they're going to like, for example, they said, we're going to breed, uh, breed the Israelis into a minority. And they said that, like in France, too. And, of course, in truth, that's what they are doing in France. It really is happening. Um, France is supposed to become a Muslim country by the year 2030. You know, just, just so you know the other side of things, too. So, like I said, I'm not, I'm not uh, taking uh, full sides with Palestinian, of course, but that is where my my sympathies lie more with the Palestinians, of course, than the Israelis. Uh, and the Israeli elites, they have conditioned the population, their population, to consider Palestinians as animals, like I said, 
you know, below even subhumans. You know, it's the same language that the Ukrainians use against about the Russians. You know, what were they calling them, orcs or something like that, which is subhuman, you know. But they themselves are the ones that are aligned with what we know in history as Nazis. Yeah, lack of respect, lack of respect for other people, like I was just saying. And it's uh, strange that we have these things going on in the world today. And as you know, one of the goals, probably, this whole thing is, is a, there's goals behind this, and it's probably the masters of the universe, they want population reduction. And uh, one way to do this is making people or, con or encouraging them to have sex change so they can't reproduce. Um, you know, food, food that causes infertility like corn, the genetic modification of foods has been found to uh, decrease male fertility. You know, even tortilla chips and corn and any, anything from that. I mean, if you haven't heard that already, that's been true for a long time. Genetically modified corn and maybe other things. Not to mention the fact that they're thinking about putting uh, vaccines in lettuce and other, and other things. It's crazy stuff, you know. <sighs> and then look at all the atrocities they do against children, you know. <sighs> I already mentioned that. I don't even like to talk about that. So you have a even a software billionaire, a man that uh, was famous for creating software. Now he's into uh, medical substances that you inject into people. And he started out before mostly with children in India. You know, a lot of uh, uh, children became paralyzed from polio vaccines in India. Well, you know who, who was behind that, even if it's been deleted off the internet. And then, of course, they had uh, vaccines in Africa caused a lot of problems to Africans, and that was a smallpox vaccine. Oh, I shouldn't even say that word, vaccine, but I did. Anyway, it's too late. And this medicine, medicine. in any case... Oh, hello. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Well, I'm back again. There was another little pause. <laughs> Those people here, as you see, I'm back in the, by the theater here, and the people um, that kicked me out of here and told me I'm not allowed to film here, they, they, they called the police. I was actually filming across the street, as you noticed. And the police came, and very nice, as usual. They're always very nice here. Um, and they said, yeah, you're allowed to film over there. They called it in and, and all that. And uh, see, Belarus is not, is not like uh, the old days in the Soviet Union, as you see. It's, uh, you can film anywhere. And like I told you, you're not allowed to film everywhere in Germany, but you are. You can film virtually anywhere in Belarus, much different from the old days of the Soviet Union. And I think these people that are inside here and that, you know, kicked me out of here, said I'm not allowed to film here, uh, they're just, uh, what, do you, what do you say, residues from the old Soviet Union. This is not their theater. This is a state. It's owned by the government or the people of the country, you know, government. So, uh, so they don't own this and they can't kick me out unless I'm doing something inside or wrecking the place or running around naked or something like that here, they can't really kick me out of here. But anyway, where uh, I left off, I believe I was talking about, you know, these uh, masters of the universe trying to reduce the world's population with, with anything, anything they can, sex changes, wars, and, and uh, yeah, you name it, sicknesses. I don't know about the uh, effectiveness of this shot in the arm that we were getting and it seems like a lot of people are actually perishing now from unexplained causes of death, I guess they call that. So you can't say more than, more than that about that sort of a thing. And uh, I already mentioned children, you know, like the war on children and a lot of children disappearing from a lot of places. This is really something, you know. And then they'll have another sickness escape from a laboratory at some point in time. So we'll see what we'll see how that goes. I wrote here. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm screwed up on my on my notes here. I was actually reading it. I had a thread going through here, but it doesn't seem like it now. But uh, 
all these superpowers are trying to tell us uh, who the enemy is. I mean, whoever that enemy might be, it's uh, biological destruction, genetic level. Well, who is the enemy anyway? Obviously, it's anyone who stands in the way of those seeking unlimited wealth, power, and control. So, and I guess if they eliminate as many people as they can of the population of the world, you know, that's just less enemies, less, less entities, enemies that they have to deal with. Fewer people, the less enemies in their way. <clears throat> and uh, I should put a note out now that uh, I'm, uh, I request that you join us because we're going to be doing a podcast here from Minsk in uh, actually I'm kind of glad if they're going to extend some kind of a wall because uh, they can't send their nastiness over here into this area in Minsk you know or Belarus or Russia so we'll be broadcasting from the free city and the free country, the free city of Minsk, the free country of Belarus. And we're going to contest this global cabal that seeks to disinherit everybody, you know, even from your own thoughts. And they put the computer chips in the brains. And actually, they don't need it anymore. They're doing such a great job in media, screwing everybody over. Look, if they can make anybody believe anything they want to right now. And you, you know, you have to be aware and you have to look up a little bit of research do things on your own people and uh, once you start seeing how the uh, a trend on how these people are treating us how they react and the, the methods methods they use you know then it becomes much easier and you'll just know that there's some sort of a an a agenda at work here mm. yes so we will be broadcasting here from the other side that's going to be the name of the podcast by the way our program from the other side mm. And send this video to anybody, anybody that you know that might be interested in this or anybody that maybe needs to hear this kind of information. And, uh, you know, maybe we can get a good amount of subscribers to this. <clears throat> I'm cold. It's going to be cold. I'll tell you what, it's supposed to be snowing later. Uh, I'm not looking for that. They say today, today we're sp supposed to get a little bit of snow. Yeah. Yeah, but... Uh, <clears throat> Like I was mentioning earlier, I wrote it here again about this October surprise. Ursula van der Leyen, you know, Ursula van der Leyen, she came out and uh, she used a much different language for this attack by Israel on this hospital. She said, um, attacks on civilian targets in the Gaza Strip are contrary to international law. She didn't say what she said about Russia or she didn't say, <laughs> I don't know. So that barbaric or what Hamas, you know, barbaric uh, atrocities, war crimes. She didn't even say the word Israel. She just said, talking about what's going on there. Mm. No word atrocities. She just said contrary to international law. Oh, kind of, what's that, a euphemism. Terrible. You know, and then using strong, I don't know. It's, oh, she's using strong language, huh? Very strong language. Now, the, the whole West is doing the same thing right now. They're, they're playing down what's happening to Israel, and they're hoping you're going to forget about this <clears throat> in a couple days here. Of course, they'll probably uh, conduct some more bombing raids or things like that. And, and I'll bet you that uh, <clears throat> Hezbollah or even Iran might respond to this bombing of this hospital. This is really something. <clears throat> if they don't respond to this, they might, they might not respond to anything. I don't know if it's going to get any worse than this, people. <clears throat> you know? And the, uh, the strong language that she used against Hamas <clears throat> and the rest, of the, the rest of these officials, or what they used against Russia, they're against alleged, alleged war crimes or alleged happenings. You know, there's not even quite proven, but this one, there's a lot more proof. <clears throat> and of course, now they're saying, oh, no, there's no proof. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> no massacre, nothing like that. And the Pentagon has come out and said, they, they're, they're, they called on Israel to comply with the laws of war, you know, and it's the laws of war. Was it like cluster mus munitions or, you know, or long range missiles or whatever? Hmm. Yeah, and the whole world is relieved. They're relieved 
by this country, the United States, <clears throat> to have such strong language to comply with the rules of, of war or something, the laws of, the laws of war, maybe the rules-based order, when nobody knows what these rules are, they're not written down anywhere. <clears throat> and maybe it's the same country that gave white phosphorus that's raining on, on the Palestine, down on the Palestinians right now. I thought that was a, a band, cluster munitions. Maybe they should ban, I don't know if it's banned, uh, depleted uranium. Oh, they say, no, no, there's no nuclear elements. People getting cancer and dying, all these birth defects. Oh, no, 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 that's, that's, that's from something else. That's from something else. <clears throat> the laws of war. <clears throat> and as I said, you know, they're trying to, you know, there was supposed to be a meeting between uh, uh, Sisi, the leader of uh, Egypt, Abbas, the leader of Palestine, the country that doesn't exist, as you know, and, uh, and Biden. It looks like that has been canceled. <clears throat> and just, uh, what was it? Yesterday I was going to report, I was putting, putting on my uh, <clears throat> video that, <clears throat> that uh, this United Nations resolution uh, proposed by Russia as for a ceasefire has all been you know, it's been taken down. It's been taken down by the United States. I guess it was the United States, uh, their allies, Japan and France, <clears throat> you know, and there was no politics in there. There was no politics. It was just asking for a ceasefire, plain and simple. And it was rejected, rejected by the United Nations Security Council, thanks to the good old US of A. Hmm. I'd already talked about these protests, protests everywhere. This, I tell you what, even right now, what's going on is probably incredible, but I'm doing this fairly early and I, my last uh, <clears throat> looking into the internet was like around 10 o'clock, so. Hmm. Abbas was saying that uh, any summit without a ceasefire is useless. The EU will continue to mediate the release of Israeli hostages, but of course not the, not the Palestinian hostages. <clears throat> In truth, entire Gaza is hostage of Israel, but they're not going to mediate for that. And the United States says they're going to continue to send more weapons and ammunition to Israel. <clears throat> and Israel, as you know, is using the tactic that Ukraine, Ukraine used. When they bomb a place, there's been reports of that, they bomb somewhere and they wait a half an hour <clears throat> when all the rescuers are coming and uh, removing uh, the rubble to try to find the people that might have survived or, or re recover the bodies. And then they bomb again. They bomb again a half an hour later to kill all the people that are doing the rescue work. That's a, that's a famous one that Ukraine was doing in the Donbass here. <clears throat> and they found out which bomb was used. I, was, I told you I was going to say that, and luckily I wrote it down. It was a 950 kilogram MK-84, <clears throat> made in America. That's, I think they call them a JDAM bomb. And this is according to the Wall Street Journal, and it's probably, I don't know, they were informed journalists might not know what these bombs are and I don't know based on what pieces they might have seen photographs taken by the Palestinians and maybe it was released to uh, press organizations so that's why the Wall Street Journal has mentioned what type of bomb that is <clears throat> United Nations Children's Fund UNICEF director Catherine Russell has stated that 300,000 children have been displaced made homeless in Gaza since the beginning of the conflict. 300,000, 300,000 children. That's just children. That's just incredible. <clears throat> and the last allegation, or the last excuse by Israel, before I started making this video, was that they did not bomb the hospital, they bombed the garage that accompanies the hospital. Now, does that make sense? looking for any possible excuse to get out of this, what they did. So anyway, you can all figure out who did this bombing. And that's about all I have to say today. So that's it for now. Thanks for joining me and I hope I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye for now.